Welcome to Purple Easel Spotlight, where we put the spotlight on artists and creatives. My name's LaToya. And I'm Megan. And we're both art instructors here at Purple Easel, California's largest paint sip studio. So today we're going to be talking about Katsushika Hokusai. And before we even jump into that, I just want to, if we can zoom up on Megan's earrings. <laughs> that is so pretty. Thank you. And they very much fit this occasion. So Megan, mm -hmm. we've covered a lot of artists here at the Purple Easel Spotlight. Yes. And many of those artists have been influenced by Hokusai. Ooh. And we're going to find that out. So both Monet and Klimt, is it Klimt? 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 Yeah. Yes, Klimt. Gustav. Yes, Gustav owned Hokusai prints. Um, his art helped influence the development of both Impressionism and Art Nouveau. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we talk about Hokusai, you'll see some of his influence in our previous covered artists. So Hokusai was born in 1760. Um, he was a Japanese Ikkyo artist, and he lived in the Edo period, lived in the Edo district um, as a painter and printmaker. He had a long, successful career. He produced 30,000 paintings, sketches, woodblock prints, and images, just in general. Let me just pick my jaw up off the floor. That is so much. <laughs> yes, he's a bit of a legend. Ooh. So here's the tea on Hokuzai. So he started to get recognized by his Ikkyo prints. And in the Red District in the Edo period, um, it was on and popping. Uh, there was so many famous like courtesans, uh, kabuki actors, puppet shows. It was super duper popping at the time. Um, and his prints and just prints in general were like high in demand. Mm -hmm. And in the next few images that you're going to see, literally everybody had these in their home. They were oh so popular. It would be like the equivalent of today's like, well, I got Beyonce's <laughs> picture on my wall. They'd be like, oh no, well, I got Taylor Swift. Like, ah, oh, that's nothing. I got Drake. Well, whatever. I got Beyonce. So these were like super duper famous celebrities that people wanted to have like in their home um, and it was cool because during this time period uh, the common folk middle class folk whoever could have art in their homes um, because back in the day even further it was just for the rich so here's some of the Ikkyo prints and so we're gonna check some of these out this is would just be something typical you would have around the house and everybody knew who these figures were mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. wow that's crazy it's cool because it was, again, just the equivalent. It's back in the days, it was kind of like sex sales. And it was, it, it's weird because to us, it's not what is like. Right. But for them. So for them, it was like, yeah. oh man, this is the coolest. It was so much like, it was super in high demand. Like the original fan art. Yeah. Almost kind of like trading cards to it. Yeah. At point. So at some point he stopped painting celebrities and started painting landscapes. And so this is where you're going to see some of that Art Nouveau mm -hmm. kind of vibe um, a little bit, which it's beautiful. And one thing I also really like about his art is just how you can just stick it up in your house. It's beautiful. It's yeah. just It's peaceful. It's serene. kind of simple and serene. I love the line work. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors are kind of muted and yeah. calming. Yeah, it's very yeah. serene. It is. And then this next one, it's giving me very much Ivan Earl. Yeah. Ivan Earl vibes. Ivan it Earl. totally is. And you can see some of his more famous work, some of the technique kind of mm -hmm. starting in here too. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Again, just very nice, beautiful, serene. And one thing that we'll talk about in the near future is that in Japanese imagery, there isn't that... I would say that much. It, there isn't a horizon line. It's kind of like mm. these panoramic, free-floating images that are actually pretty, pretty good, pretty nice. I like that. Yeah, I've never actually considered that that was the thing that they're missing. Mm -hmm. But thinking of a lot of classic Asian art, like mm -hmm. totally, that makes sense now. And we'll get into that shortly because this is it's pretty pivotal in what we'll be talking about soon. Oh. So Hokusai changed his name 30 different times. What? And it made me think about Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but it was super common in Japan and Japanese culture. The art kind of um, adopts a new name and signifies different changes in philosophy, thinking, chapters in your life, um, Interesting. personal circumstances, things like that. So it's like it would be a lot harder to keep track of one person then, huh? Yes, it was. And that's exactly why we're just going by Hokusai. And that's the general, that's the last thing he was born with. So that's what we're going to stick with. However, um, he 
I did like the last name. I didn't put it in there because I can't pronounce it. I didn't want to butcher it, but it, it roughly translates to like old man who's crazy about art. <laughs> it's so cute. If you ever got to pick your own name, yeah. I mean, that's epic. Yeah, very much. And speaking of old man things, so at the age of 50, he got struck by lightning. What? He had a stroke. He had to relearn how to draw. Oh. Um, but none of that matters. He does not want you to care about that at all because he says, and I quote, all that I have done before the age of 70 is not worth bothering with. He doesn't want you to really care about his artwork. Why, you might ask? Oh. Because at the age of 70 is where he produced his monumental work called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. And within those 36 are the Great Wave of Kanagawa slash the Great Wave. So we're going to get into that. So here's the tea. <laughs> more tea. Uh, yes, there's more tea on the wave. So um, in Japan, they were like, no, European countries, we do not want to be converted to your Christian ways. Mm -hmm. So, but the Dutch were like, we're not going to try to convert you. And they're like, well, we like that. So twice a year, they would allow the Dutch to come into Japan and for trading purposes. But this is where um, Hokusai got a hold of Dutch and European prints, mm -hmm. artworks and stuff like that. So he looks at it and he's like, huh. Horizon Lion. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> and so this is like the first time, I don't say like the first, but pretty much kind of the first time that you will see a horizon line in that Japanese style art because again, it had that panoramic, free flowing, yeah. kind of floating perspective. Here you have your horizon line and, and all of the 36 views of mm -hmm. um, Mount Fuji. The cool thing about the wave is that it is perfect in the sense that it it's the golden ratio. Mm -hmm. um, it was made with Prussian blue, and that was hot at the time. Um, not a lot of things were made with that color. It pops, first of all, and second of all, it didn't fade, um, mm, or doesn't fade. Lasting. Yes, it's very long lasting. And this was printed 8,000 times. No wonder it's so iconic. Yes. 8,000 times? Mm -hmm. It's like the original run or just like over time? Do you know offhand? You know what? I don't know. That's crazy. Well, it's interesting to me to see obviously the European influence, mm -hmm. but then how it went back the other way. Yes. And so many notable artists were like, yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder which prints of his that Monet and them yeah. all had. That's what I was wondering too. Right? Like, like, which one? Was? What one were they drawn to? Yeah. It probably wasn't this. It could have been, and we'll, we'll get into that. Oh, oh, oh okay. I got some more tea. But also, I wanted to show you what it would look like on the cherry wood. So in the Japanese woodblocking printing, they would use cherry wood, mm -hmm. and it was because it was abundant, but also because it doesn't splinter. Yeah, it's a harder uh, wood, right? I know nothing I of wood. So. So. <laughs> I, in my head, thought it was softer. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the wood experts are gonna comment <laughs> and be so like, "Sorry, you idiots." <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry in advance. Which is really cool. That's cool. You could see all the like carving lines mm -hmm. and stuff. It's so interesting to think of a print having started like that. And one thing also that we have to keep in mind about printing, and this goes in today's printing as well, is your image is going to be flipped. So this would be the original, and then it's going to be flipped. So they had to do all, like, characters backwards. Mm -hmm. mm. And then when you're printing, like in today, you don't start from page one, two, three, four. It's kind of like backwards, yeah. backwards, backwards, forward. Um, and I also wanted to include this next image just to give you guys a little bit more, like, <gasps> crazy detail. I know. Imagine just like one little slip and you're like, oh, there's a thought. I, 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 I totally <laughs> thought about that. I totally thought about it. I was like just kind of cringing looking at this like, oh, I would mess that up. Yeah, yeah that's wrong. That up. Yeah. So Hokusai is considered to be the greatest masters in art history. Mm -hmm. He is the GOAT. Um, and we didn't even get into his manga or his erotica. That was another thing. <laughs> you mean dang. Yeah, there, there's that as well. But I might put that in a little sneak peek a little bit later. In fact, art historians say that Vincent van Gogh might have been super duper inspired to make his Starry Night from the wave because he was a great admirer of the great wave. Mm -hmm. um, and he also collected a lot of Japanese prints. I mean, I can kind of see the influence there. There's kind of that PC bit to it mm -hmm. where you look at the movement of the water and then the movement of his stars. Mm -hmm. uh, they very much are reminiscent of each other. Yes. 
And one thing I also notice about pretty much yeah that and Hokusai's work is the movement, or just like Japanese art in, in general have this certain movement to it, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a lot of fluidity. Fluidity, um, and I know you think of like traditional like bamboo brushes and ink, and I think that mm. part of it is what they're using enables a specific look yeah and you think of true. trying to have that flowy and then even manage to translate it into the wood blocks yeah which, it's totally different medium but it's that same kind of flow yeah mm -hmm. today we wanted to highlight amy lewis kendall you can at her on instagram at amy lewis kendall c Ooh. c u n d a l l um, and she's a nature-inspired lino cut printmaker. And what lino cut is, is you have your block of linoleum and you carve into it and you make these beautiful designs, essentially, long story short, on what or lino some cut. simple ones, depending oh. on your skill level. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, there is some really great simple ones. I'm going to shout out to um, the great Adolf. And that sounds weird, but that's his name. That's his handle also on Instagram. And his is very nice, very, very simple. But I just want to shout out Amy real quick. So Amy has an intrigue for the natural world. Um, and oceanic life is a strong source of inspiration for her work. The background for Amy's lino cuts and prints are kept plain, so the subject matter are striking. Mm. So you can see through the images that you can see right now on mm. your computer, phone, whatever it is that you're looking at, these very, 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 very beautiful lino cuts. And again, the reason why I chose Amy is the flowiness, the simplicity, the how easily you can decorate interior design <laughs> stuff like you can with Hokusai's work. Very just lovely, serene, peaceful, and aquatic. I This piece in particular mm -hmm. is fascinating to me because you get so much depth and all of those little overlapping bits I can't imagine doing that backwards, taking it away from the, you know, like the- Oh yeah, no, I, I, I know, I, I stare at it too. <laughs> I've been staring at it for some time and I just, I don't get it. I mean, I, I've done it, but I'm not oh, like a math so, so I'm like, that's yeah. just, <laughs> right? And the amount of like fine- Yeah, because there's so much fine lines in it. Yeah, not even the, just the fine lines, but then the little do 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 for the bottom fronds, like, oh, oh my gosh, it's incredible. Yes. So much depth. It's again, just very beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to include uh, some of her work and then the lino cut next to the work. And that's one thing I really like about her Instagram is that you get to see. Yeah. It's not just like, here's a pretty picture. It's like, here's the work behind it. Right. Um, so you can appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah, I, I love it. It's basically sculpture flattened down. Yeah, 2D like sculpture. Yeah, like a relief sculpture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's your mind has to think differently. And then also you're making the mirror image. Yes. So just to process all of that while carving and yeah. try not to like take too much or, yeah. like, or whatever. Like you have to yeah. have a lot of patience, a yeah. lot of patience with this. And like you said, it is mirrored. So everything that you do is going to be in reverse. Mm -hmm. This one's just, uh, it's just so pretty. Yeah. The subtlety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love, my favorite thing I think about Lino Cut is similar to like screen printing. Mm -hmm. The little imperfections. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, not yeah. going to be exactly the same. Maybe you put your ink on a little mm -hmm. too thick or whatever it is and you get subtle differences. Yeah. I many you're printing. I love yes, it. I, love I do too. It's like this nice texture mm -hmm. that you get with it. It's really nice. And again, I like the fishes because there's the movement and I see that in a lot of the Japanese um, ink blocking and just the imagery is just this flowy movement to it. Yeah, it's, it's even has a bit of an Escher vibe. It's not quite a tessellation, yeah, yeah. but the just repeat. The first, yes, repeat exactly. Patterns. The pattern, the man, there's so much detail in there. Mm. I, mm. I know I was looking inside, like just pick one fish and then All right. <laughs> Look at the, the little scales on it. Uh, <laughs> my mind is blown. <laughs> again, just all around a beautiful. And oh, again, I, the leaves. Yeah, I know they're so pretty. I would put that in my house. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I wanted to throw out this octopus um, because, you know, when I was talking about that erotica that I did yeah, mention yeah. before? Yes. <laughs> so if you take a look and Google the dream of the fisherman's wife, um, that is also one of Hokusai's famous pieces. I just can't put it here because it is like on the scale of it's called Shunga, uh, but erotica. But I don't, to me, I don't think it's like, oh, clinch your pearls kind of stuff, but it is, you know, to someone it might be. Uh, so, but it, I saw an octopus here and I'm doing Hokusai and Amy. So I'm like, ah, just connect the two and you can figure it out. Go Google it yourself and you can take, <laughs> oh, let's see. Well, my discussion question is, what is a lesson that you learned during your time as an artist that has changed the way you create art? And what I mean by that is pretty much what is something that you've been doing a long time and then like some you got taught from either like YouTube or someone taught you how to do something. You're like, oh, and then you've just been doing that the whole time and you just keep it in the back of your mind. It could just be something as like a color or a figure or. The first thing that comes to mind is tracing paper oh because going through different art courses like um composition and stuff mm -hmm. you know you're taught you know grid out your stuff and then match your reference photo for every little square mm -hmm. to try to get the overall picture and i can do that mm -hmm. i i it just takes a lot of time and so i say use tracing paper to your advantage because then you can get to the fun stuff faster yeah, yeah. and not be discouraged um one of my composition teachers actually had us go through like magazines and it was like a figure ground uh negative and positive space kind mm -hmm. of exercise and we had to trace stuff okay. he wanted us to trace stuff to get all the fine minutia mm -hmm. of whatever it was mm -hmm. and then compile a bunch of different things together so after that point, I was like, tracing paper is my best friend. And uh, now uh -huh. I'm so lazy that I will reverse an image on my computer uh -huh. and then flatten it out because I have like one of the yoga type uh -huh. computers and I'll just trace it straight off the computer uh -huh. screen and then flip the image back around so that when I flip my tracing paper, because yeah. traditionally you would have an image, you would trace it. You'd flip your tracing paper over, you'd go over those lines mm -hmm. again so that you're putting lead on the other side. Then you flip it again mm -hmm. onto whatever your piece is going to be on your paper or whatever and trace it for a third time. Yeah. So I've eliminated all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I trace it one time on the computer and then right onto my paper. Ah, uh, that's smart. That's using the old needle. It's changed everything. <laughs> nice, nice. I'd say for me, it's just not to shade with black and with painting. Um, I used to do that all the time. And it's not that you can't, you still can. We do that here for Purple Easel. Mm -hmm. um, but it's more natural looking if you shade with the darker tones of yeah, the color. <laughs> I hardly ever use black in mm -hmm. painting unless it's to darken another color. Mm -hmm. But generally, yeah, yeah. even just using the complementary color will darken it enough. But if I'm really going for like super dark, yeah, you know, pure black, I use very, very sparingly. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there's technically like no black in nature. Right. Well, you know, what's interesting. I can't recall, I think it was one of my events here. I was quizzing them. I was like, oh, does anybody know what the complimentary color of blah, blah, blah was? Mm -hmm. And then we got into this discussion of light okay. versus like art colors. Okay. Because in a light spectrum, white is all of the colors. Mm -hmm. But in an art context, it's the absence of all colors. Yes. So I thought that was an interesting qualifying mm -hmm. question. I was like, oh, well, I'm not like a scientist. So let's go with a hard one. Yeah. But it was kind of a funny thing I hadn't really thought about. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's so many little nuances. Color it theory is very deep, and I can't even pretend <laughs> to know that much about it. Yes, that is verbal in that. <laughs> so nowadays, there's so much accessible information out there. You're not required to go take a class although i highly recommend it even at a community college or something mm -hmm. if you have that ability but there's tons and tons of online stuff there's youtube there's us yes if you go to purple easel plus um we offer you know 
paint and sip activities and we give you some instruction and tips and mm -hmm. things that will help you learn the best thing you can do is practice but surround yourself with other artists and other information because mm -hmm. those are the small little tidbits that mm -hmm. can just change your entire trajectory that is so very true and you know we like you said we do live in the age of technology so there's so much information that you get that you can get from from anywhere so there's no excuse. Stop making excuses. Get out of your yeah. bubble. <laughs> yeah. You can literally find anything that you want art related as far as information goes or entertainment goes um, literally at your fingertips. So mm -hmm. utilize that. So no matter what, just do it. It's never too late to reinvent yourself, even if you're 70, just like today's artist. Absolutely. It's never too late. And from all of us here at Purple Weasel, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to check out the links below for today's artists, Hokusai and Amy Kundal. Mm -hmm. Join us at purpleweaselplus.com to paint with the world's largest paint sip studio online. And if you're in Southern California, make sure to swing by the studio. In the meantime, create more and create often. Bye. Megan. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the yes. <laughs>